and we're live. What up? Oh, Lord, what a day. Yes, what a day. Although Adam was showing off more red lines again. Was he? I'll have to go check that out. I've been yeah, kind of... He, he found a rally case. Nice. So, I was like, yay. Oh, man, Chili's backing up. We gotta close the door, puppy. All right, let's do this, or we can wait a few seconds for let people we'll build up. Go check that out. I've been yeah. this. There we go. We got well, three Aloha. peoples. We got Cheers. three peoples. What's up, James? How, how you doing? Howdy, howdy. James, how are you? Reagan is in here as he plows. Reagan, I, I am happy for you. You got some rain, hopefully. At least a little bit. Even though it was raining here last night a little bit. Super Mike. What up? Yeah. Just tired. Deborah Lynn Payne. What up, Deb? In the house. Yeah, so I think. You know, we got a couple of things to talk about tonight. Um, you know, the topics are, um, we haven't talked about them in a while, and I want to talk about them again, especially the price gouging, so to speak, or what do you want to call it? I mean, I hear you on that one. I mean, we were talking, I saw a car that, you know, you and me and Brian were talking about today. Yeah, Man. I was in there a little bit. I want to know. This is the easiest way to describe it. When something brand new comes out, who is the person that goes, oh, this one's going to be worth 50 bucks? Why is that? There's always, in every every single five pack, well, this is here. We'll use this as an example. This new skateboard thing. There's five cars. There's the Cruiser Bruiser, the Baja Truck, the Maxim Leeway, the Nitro Tailgater, then the Rapid Hot Wheel Rapid Response. So, obviously, you got to go with collectability. Cruiser Bruiser, awesome wagon, demolition derby, love it. Baja Truck, eh, not really my casting, but the, the card art on the skateboard is kind of cool. The Rapid Response has a really cool artwork. The leeway is pretty cool, like a burger monster. And then the white one is the treasure hunt. But yet this one is the one that everybody's asking the money for. So is it just because of it's the fact that it's a bone shaker? Or is it because of there's a certain reason behind it? I'm trying to think of another example that we can use. It always seems well, like... About... Go ahead. I was going to say, let's talk about the, the, the truck we were talking about, that, that O'Reilly's... OBS uh, Silverado that came out. Yeah. Now I, I'm literally telling you, there was a post today on another page. This guy goes, he shows a picture of it and he goes, 125 or trade. Show me what you got. Okay. I'm not upset with the fact that he's asking for 125. That's it's his car. He can ask for whatever he wants for it. Do I think that price is a little high? You bet. Um, my problem, the other problem with it is I want to do a trade. And when I was taught how to post trades online, it wasn't that way. It was, this is what I have. This is what I want. Mm -hmm. Right? And he's perfectly oblivious to the fact that and didn't care. No, that's what made me more mad about the whole post than uh, what he was asking for, or something like that. There's a Hot Wheel logo right there on the on the truck there, Jeff. So, <laughs> so what do you think? I mean, what's your uh, thoughts? Um, I think that basically the easiest way to put it, in my opinion, is that 
the etiquette seems to be lost on a lot of folks where it just becomes, you know, I found that, you know, we can go back with the nightmare before Christmas combi. When those things first dropped, people were asking like $30 for it. And now they're like $2. And people were literally posting pictures and were like, I'm looking for supers. It's like, I don't understand why you think that that's going to be worth that. You can try. Obviously, when they first come out, that's when everything is the hottest and everybody can get the most for something. But everything cools down. And I think that people should stop giving into that. Like, oh, I've got to have it now. I got to have it now. You know, I call it the got to have it now disease <laughs> because it's not worth it. You end up, sp- you end up spending two to 15 times what it's actually going to be worth if if you just wait. Now, obviously, there is some instances where that does not work. That would be in the RLC world, things like that. When the RLC drops, you buy it, plain and simple. You know, everybody that did or did not get the Lamborghini this weekend, I have not looked to see what they're going for yet, but I'm pretty sure that it's got to be at least 60 plus most people seem like they want to up their money by at least two what's up roy supply and demand and people fish for the most they can and only takes one person to pay the price there you go some things happens same thing happens with the convention slash national cars yeah i understand yeah and but see with when it comes to the nationals and convention cars i feel that those ones are actually worth a little bit something you know, if we go back to the original Charlotte, when they had the the power wagon, people were asking 120 bucks for the power wagon, and now you can pick it up for 45, 50 bucks. But the the gasser was supposed to be the hot one, but now you can pick that gasser up for like uh, about 100 bucks, 90 to 100. So everything kind of has a really good cooling off period. But when it comes to these store exclusives like you know, M2 is doing with these O'Reilly stuff. We all know that O'Reilly's is an auto parts store. Therefore, they don't have a lot to begin with. And normally, they get ate up pretty quick and then they're gone. So if you want something, yeah, you're going to have to pay for it, which is one of the downsides of our hobby, in my opinion. True. And... and Roy makes a great point about the fishing aspect. And that is really more what I was trying to get at was that was that fishing aspect. Um, Yeah, that car may just it may over time carry that price, but it's the it wasn't even subtle. You know, it was pretty blatant. Some have just have to have it now and will pay too yeah. much to start and many know it. And, and you're not wrong, Roy. And that's, that's one of the problems with the hobby. It's, you know, you have to have it immediately in your collection. Um, I, I've been, I've been wanting, you know, this skate bone shaker for a while now. And I was fortunate enough to get this one roped to me. So thank you, Mr. Derek. You're awesome. And I'm going to open it tonight. So let's see. Super Mike, it took a while for me, but I wait now. Don't work all the time, but it does you money ahead. Exactly. Yeah. You know, if you take your time, wait, you you know, as we've been told for many years, if you want it, it'll come to you. You know, you'll find it at a better price. You know, obviously there is instances. No, sorry, you can't. (laughs) You know, but sometimes, you know, when you see it, that is the time to buy it. But when it comes to hard to find cars, prime example, the 70 Camaro out of the master set last year. Yeah, I know, Roy. It's been that way for a long time. Um, 70 Camaro master set. I think maybe the green one or that orange Uh, one. Um, maybe the green one that was supposed to be a dollar gen or the Walgreens one that nobody could find because they never got released. And then they got released this year. 
But, you know, Roy also, again, makes another great point about patience. I mean, that patience has paid off for me when I was, you know, that's when I, when I learned it was in 2016 when the first set of Japan ones were coming out for car culture and everybody was, you could not find them and you could not find them, could not find, could not find. And eventually they ended up showing up as I was driving home back to Nebraska after my retirement. But, you know, Roy's right, patience. And that patience sometimes backfires on you, too. Mm -hmm. That it does. You know, sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you regret it and you talk about it for years and years and years to come. So, Or sometimes they, your patience shows up in a couple of random pictures on from an L.A. convention. This but is the, true. That's the point that, again, the point I was really kind of getting at is that etiquette and that this is what I want. This is what I have. Yeah. You know, put it out there. You know, mm -hmm. there's a good chance somebody might be willing to help you. Um, and you can make a friendship out of it. I mean, not saying that that's ever happened before. Yeah. But stranger things have happened. <laughs> you know, that just kind of kind of really got to me because it was like this guy was trying to justify it by showing all these pictures from eBay with. Well, here's all the pricing for them. They're going for 125. They're going for 125. And it was like, I didn't really get a close, close look because I didn't have much time. But from reading from the comments, it sounded like these were asking prices or, you know, 125, but best offer was accepted. <laughs> Go on a budget. Yeah. The problem is, is our budgets are just like the national debt. We extend them and extend them and extend them. Yeah, and we do. You know, you know, I have learned several times. You know, I've been to a couple of nationals now, and you know, I normally try to take X amount of dollars with me, and sometimes I overspend, sometimes I underspend. You know, it just depends on on what you find. You know, there's there's always different things that show up in every location. It doesn't have to be nationals or L.A. It could be, you know, it could be up at the, you know, the bank this weekend. And I found some some really cool auto world trucks that I didn't even know existed. And I'm very happy to, to, to get those in my collection. What's up, Greta? You know, some, you know, I don't have time to go hunting on every single page, every single sale auction. You know, I, I just don't have the time nor the money. I've got, I got a job, you know, I got to, I got to go to work and I don't have time to sit and spend hours and hours and hours scouring every single Walmart from here to, to New Mexico or, you know, just constantly hunting for things, you know, yeah, sure. If I had, you know, hit the, if I hit the Powerball tomorrow night, that may change. But, you know, as for right now, I don't think I'm going to hit it. But we're, we got the ticket. We're going to try. But even then, you know, if you have an unlimited budget, are you still going to spend too much money on something? Most likely. You know, I don't know. It's just my two cents, I guess. <laughs> Oh, let's see. We got a comment here from uh, YouTube land. Uh, I thought I overpaid for my India Power Command 57 Chevys. At, What's up, Joe? At the second Nats. Um, two of them for like 800 Yeah, you can't touch one for less than 250 I hope you meant 80 Um, But still, I mean, he makes a, Joe makes a good point there with that. And let's see, Mr. Wiggins, how are you, sir? That's that's my whole thing with all of this is like, it's okay to, to negotiate. It's okay to try to get that price as low as, as you possibly can. But there's some people that just need to learn. <laughs> yeah, you might ask 125 for it or whatever the price is. doesn't mean... That's what it's worth. It's only worth what you pay for it mm -hmm. or what you're willing to pay for it. Yeah. I mean, you can ask, um, you know, you can ask, you know, $125 for any car out there. You know, I could literally ask 125 bucks for, for this, 
Woo. little M2 lowered, lowered blazer. Nobody's going to give me 125 bucks for it. Now, if I chime in and add, I don't know where the sixth one is. Uh, there it is. You know, so now, ah, could I ask 125 for the whole set? Maybe. And I can, I can throw in the box to go with it. You know, I have the box. Is this worth 125 bucks? I don't know. Roy wants to know if you, if you'll uh, two dollars for that air bone shaker. Um, why why does everybody know what, all the errors that I keep getting? I don't I don't uh, yeah I don't know Roy. I don't know if I want to sell it. Ah, camera <laughs> down. Camera okay, down. As we. Have technical difficulties. There. No, the camera Joe, just fell over. Joe makes a really good point here about being able to walk away. And, you know, you might find it. You know, I still hold out that I'll find uh, the candy striper for less than 400 one day. And that's a real one, too. But I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> yes, yeah, right. I, now that I think about it, I think I did tell you about it. I don't know. Well, we might have to talk about it. <laughs> but, yeah, there is a possibility. I mean, technically, it's, it's yeah, I mean, it's just a really cool air. And, and I got it from a really good friend of mine, Mr. Rodney. And, uh, you know, everyone knows I like my airs. Super Mike gave Too me an fitty. amazing air this weekend. It's a uh, – <laughs> <two fish. laughs> uh, you know, it's a Batmobile first or uh, faster than ever, and it's got a blacked-out wheel on it. And I really like – those fun errors so you know yeah you, you found one for me too you know that twin mill that go out of the f oh yeah set. yeah that is um i think that's upstairs actually but yeah i mean i have i have a lot of errors <laughs> oh my god not again <sighs> scooter oh and he knocked the i'm just, i i have it i'm trying to 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 have it Monopoly at a certain angle. Money. <clears throat> Monopoly money. Oh, Lord. Well, I mean, and I, and I do have a tendency of just sending people things, so you never know. You know, I, I have sent, um, if I remember correctly, I did send Mr. Greg a uh, really nice error that he did not have. But you didn't send him the one error. Oh no, because I only have one of that one. I had an extra of the doll, the all big wheel. So, get to, <laughs> I'm trying, Brian. Every, I need to get a stand for my cell phone because it keeps falling over. Would you consider a front grill of a truck that's chipped in air? Um, it depends. I'd have to see it. Um, I have several trucks that the grills aren't there on. I have one that looks like it was rolled and it got a whole bunch of road rash on the roof. So, it just depends. You know, everyone considers certain errors to a different level of collectability. You know, you can get a, you, know, you can get whatever this thing is, and it, say if it's, you know, missing a wheel. For me, this doesn't do any that much anymore because if you open the package and you cut the wheels off, that doesn't, it doesn't have that wheel area anymore because it's just, you just cut it off. So I always I think deem, one Go ahead. As I was gonna say, one of the best things you ever taught me about errors was that if you take it out of the package, does the air still exist? Yep. And I have a perfect example of that because I love this truck and it's right here and I always know where it is. Yeah. We have the what is this thing called again? One of Brent's S errors. Speed box. It's a glow in the dark speed box. Glow in the dark wheels pink, whatever. I opened it up because I wanted the cards for a mail-in and when I spun it around it's Ooh. literally missing half the body. Well, a, a portion of the body. It's missing this error, the door. it's still an error because you can't fake this. You know, I take a pair of, you know, snips and cut these front tires off. Is it an error because it has no front wheels on it? Somebody will buy it. I won't. 
Fair enough. I'm getting, now, I'm what is on, on a rant here, aren't I? No, I think you're you're gotten people's attention and sparking some questions, which is what we always love. Well, yeah. You know, you had mentioned about finding, you know, unique or or harder to find things at at different places, and I honestly believe at our show this weekend, this past weekend, between. Uh, the Volkswagen Heaven and the tub full of FEPs from um, that Mr. Brian had and probably about half of the 2001 vintage racing sets, there were some really, really unique things that showed up. I mean, yeah. lots of convention cars, Brazilian convention cars, yeah. lots and lots of really awesome awesome stuff and it was like i don't have enough money for this oh i hear you man i and there was stuff that i wanted and i actually had it set aside and i never got back to it there was a couple of things that i missed because you know we were busy you know with you know with selling and you know giving away raffle prizes and everything like that that i just didn't have a chance to get back and i ended up missing something that i think i need for my collection but i'm not 100 percent sure because I don't know what I have anymore, so I'm kind of just winging it at this point. So that's one of the things that's nice about collecting errors because they're all one of a kind. So if I if I see an error I, I like, I know I can buy it. So, <laughs> so the other thing that I that was really great about this weekend, other than you guys taking really bad pictures of me, um, oh come on, it was fine. Uh, was the fact that the, we had not one racetrack but two racetracks going. This is true, and. Oh my, the kids were having a blast. I mean, the the downhill was I think is you know finally getting tuned into where it needs to be because we didn't have cars flying all over the place like it was in Elmwood. Mm -hmm. And the sizzler track that Dell did was just unbelievable. He had those kids had so much fun um, to the point where he had to it's like we can't go right now, otherwise we're gonna lose the uh batteries for for it and i didn't bring a he didn't bring extra batteries so i yeah, thought those we were two literally really had to highlights. literally had to take a break from racing <laughs> but that was such a i just thought that was one of the better parts of the whole whole day in and of itself um yeah. what were some highlights for you and for those out there who went to the show what were some highlights for you guys um getting to and I wish I would have brought it downstairs, but I didn't because it's upstairs. Um, getting my Halloween car was was epic. And the the Halloween car, the way we did it this year, or the way we did it to forever and wanted to actually get their car, we had, if you weren't there, um, we literally put all of the cars into lunch bags. And there was 24 regulars and there was two chases in there. And all 24 regulars were picked before the chases were. It literally got down to the fact that there was three cars left. There was two chases and a regular. And we pulled for a guy who what, couldn't make it to the show. And he literally got the last regular. So then it was like. No, it was I, for Barb. Or Deb, for, excuse me. Oh, Lord. You did I it did again. It. Yeah, it was did for it again. Deb. And you did it during the live show. So now I know. we're going to hear all of this. You can't keep their names straight. And they're both in here. I know. And I'm waiting for the for, for the comments to flow. Because they should. Yeah. Because they're two different people. You should that. really, really, really get their names correct. Because you realize that. You even have picture proof of it. Oh, I'm waiting for t-shirts to pop up. Oh, Lord. Oh, I just know it is. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't even well, know what we are talking least, about now. At least I didn't get called my name. Only you. Yeah, you got the scooter. I didn't get yeah. my name. Well, my name. I don't even too. have a name. Yeah, technically you do. I don't know. I think you gave it to yourself. but <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, we uh, digress like crazy. Um. It was a great show. Uh, there was a lot of tons. There was a lot of cool stuff there. You know, I wish I would have had a couple extra minutes and when I went 
and got to do a little of the uh, racing. Um, we are working on that currently. We are going to be we're going to have a show here in Omaha, and then that announcement should be coming here soon. So bear with us; it's coming. Uh, I didn't get I didn't get a chance to play with the, with the Sizzler track, and I really really wanted to. <laughs> But I did, I did run the uh, the new uh, San Diego Comic Con Night Rider down the downhill track, so that was fun. And, Lights going. Yep, Nick has a video of that, so we'll have to post the the San Diego kit car going down the racetrack because I think that would be a lot of fun. Nice. Let's nice. See what else. Um, um, it, the elevators worked. Yes, the elevators worked. <laughs> we, worked we didn't perfectly. get any. We didn't get any curses from. Uh, from power um, outages power outages there we go but yeah so, um let's see our next show is going to be down in elmwood december the 4th we're looking around 60 ish tables for that um we'll have an announcement for that here pretty soon because people are already asking mm -hmm. uh let's see what else did we have on the agenda for tonight i don't know ramble um, Ramble. I mean, we, we could continue to talk about people overcharging for stuff. That always seems to be oh, a hot yeah. topic. Um, but I'm I mean, all in favor of that. I mean, there's there's but there's literally no way around it. It is what it is. You know, people are going to charge what they feel they can get for anything that they can. You know, I've been offered 20 bucks for this. And I don't want to sell it because I really like this air. You know, I've had people offer me a lot of money for some of the cars that are behind me in the case. They're not, they, they may be worth it. They may be worth more. I don't know. You know, it just depends on the person that wants the cars. You know, I paid 68 cents for my Volkswagen treasure hunt from 95. I, I bought it in the store and now it's, I don't know, three and a half. Will I ever sell mine? Yeah, eventually, and maybe in about 20 years. You know, who knows? I might get 68 cents out of it in 20 years. I don't know. But there always seems to be somebody who wants a little too much for some of their cars. Um, and, you, you know, and, and occasionally you'll see that at shows, too. It, it doesn't just mean, you know, eBay or, you know, a fishing-style site you know it could be a show you know sometimes you'll go to a show and somebody will have main lines for five bucks that you can literally go down to a walmart and pick them up for a dollar seven or a dollar eight whatever it is nowadays but i'm starting to rant yeah, now so. I... what's being found recent um you know that's really um Hard to say because what I've been seeing is that, you know, one guy was showing pictures down in Omaha of like four cases ago and and there was four cases of it. You know, it, it's just completely random. Mm -hmm. bomb has got their Christmas stuff already and they've already put it out. You know, you can get the entire Christmas set now before Halloween. I have yet to see a Halloween set around. Either. Um. The Halloween cars this year are kind of lame, but uh, I know hy V has them. I have a set. They're all right. Um, I was in a Walmart this afternoon, and they had the Turtles um, premium set that came out. When did that come out? Probably about a year ago, maybe, or at yeah. the beginning of this year. Yeah. I mean, so, it, you know, you're talking eight, ten months behind. And I'm just now seeing it, so it just kind of it just kind of hit or miss. It just depends on on what gets put out by the by the people or what what gets delivered to them. You know, sometimes we've had a lot of shipping issues this year, and I don't foresee that going away. But Bomb Guards has both 21 and 22 holiday sets here. Let's see, nice. uh, it's it's all it's all random. I mean, we. Our Walmart, and we only have one Walmart up here, they literally had four cases of premiums that they've been sitting on for like five months. And then 
all of a sudden, after some discussions via email to corporate, you know, they showed up on the shelves, you know, there's been a lot of that. There's been a lot of, you know, when they did put them out and I can only use Walmart as a main example, the boxes were already cut top and bottom. So, you know, somebody had been in them before they even made it out to the, to the shelves, you know, even around to the pallets out of the shelves where they were cut on the, on the floor somewhere. It's just, um, you know, I don't get it. There's yeah. just so much randomness uh, going on right now with product deliverability, and and it's not it's not really Walmart's fault. It's not Mattel's fault. It's not the distribution people's fault. It's just the way things have been going on for the last two to three years. And I don't know when the normalization is going to come back, if ever. Yeah, I'll say, or if it ever will. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Mainlines International Cards, I hear you. Walgreens put out a case from 21. No, that's crazy. You know, yeah, it just depends. It, it, there is no rhyme or reason when it comes to finding things in stores. Um, I know I found the new red Ryu tuned Silverado the other day and I found some of the new Subaru treasure hunts, but I never, I never found the Jeep from a couple months ago. I didn't really want it, but I never found one. You know, I found the Subaru, which I was really happy about. And if you were here last week, you saw me rip it open and I would show you the other one, but it's been, it's it's been, it's been poached off my table. Uh, (laughs) I'm getting I'm getting lesser and lesser access to my toys here every every week that goes by. So <laughs> so the other thing the way to look at this is yeah, there's not new new things coming out, but there's opportunities. Mm-hmm. There's opportunities now for some of this stuff that's been in the backlog for 6 to 15 months to show up now and you never know. You might find that treasure hunt that you were looking for from a year ago. You might find that white Toyota, 2018 Toyota 4Runner that everybody's been looking for and paying 35 to 50 bucks for. Wait till the black one comes out. <laughs> right. But the point to all of this is something, again, that Roy had said earlier in the show. Patience. Mm-hmm. Patience, patience, patience. Because you never know what's going to happen. And Bill makes a good point here that he goes, I think once the backlog at the harbors and the warehouse clears out, we may get a normal delivery schedule again, which I 100% agree to. I I can't wait. But there's one thing that I do want to talk about. If we go backwards to what? 18 era? Anybody miss those big 4x4 dump bins full of cars? Nope. I do. I, I love those things. I love dump bins in general. And there's a reason why I like a good dump bin. I understand that it ruins the cards and it bends them and, it, and J-hooks get messed up and corners get rolled. But you know what? Not everybody wants to dig those things. They see that and like, I ain't got time for that. I'm out of here. But I don't know how many super treasure runs I pulled out of dump bins and I just miss the dump bins. <laughs> I really, really do. What's up, Mr. Lawhead? But yeah, I, I have I love dump bins, and I kind of I kind of wish they'd come back. Exactly, Nick. That's exactly why. More opportunity to find errors, because when you're going through one of those big dump bins, you have to you have to take them out, and you're looking at every one of them. If you're on the peg, you're just doing this, and you're looking for just the ones you need. So you might only catch half the car. But when you're going through a dump bin, or even the 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 most worst the, the only one i hate is the big metal one that some walmart still have yes. i hate those things those things i call the that's the evil dump bin i hate those but i'll still dig that thing to the bottom if it was empty and now it's full i'll still go all the way to the bottom of that thing so um derek makes a great point there about the being patient for those expensive cars there there is a fine line with that and there like i've said we've 
we've talked about that story several times. You know, at, at what point does it bottom out and start to go back up? Um, but yeah, so, he makes a great point there. Sometimes they don't, though. On 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 a flip side, for the Gucci caddy, we got to bring up the period correct one ninety. That thing went for twelve or twenty six bucks, I think, is what they sold for, and it's never stopped. I think the last time I checked, it's twelve to fifteen hundred dollars now, which is insane. Uh, you know, it just it just keeps growing, in my opinion, and I'm glad I have one. Dump bins are great for finding multiple rogues. There you go, exactly. And I've done that. You know, I've I was lucky enough to find a all large wheel sixty eight Nova Golf. <laughs> Actually, I found two of them, and I was nice, and I roped one, and I sent it off to Mister Sully, and uh, but then I found an all small wheel Nova, and he would like that one, but I won't give him that one. <laughs> no, he yeah, won't. you know, and that's so, just it. It's just it's hit or miss. You know, people find things in different stores. You know, I've seen people bring things out of calendar stores, grocery stores auto parts stores you go to a gas station i mean hot wheels are starting to become everywhere and i see i seen was best buy was supposed to be holding on to cars now which is just yeah. insane but you always got to dig the bottom of the dump and no one wants christmas to time look yeah christmas is coming too so we're gonna we're gonna start getting more and more stuff in so so speaking there's another topic i want to talk about tonight no um, you got your newsletter tonight, right? Yes. I haven't opened okay. it yet, but yes, I have it. I got mine. And, you know, there's right on the in, not on the inside cover, but on the first page, it has an update. Now, we were all expecting them to be in this issue, but they're not. So it looks like, according to what this note said, and to an update that was put out on CEU's web uh, Facebook page, that it's looking like December-ish for when the update will come out with the newsletter, and 800 tickets will be sold to newsletter subscribers. You can have up to three, I believe it said on there, on one form, and... Then after that, they're going to have like an online sale for the remaining 270 or so tickets, you know, and that number may fluctuate based off of, you know, how many people, if all 800 sell out or if they find out they can have more um, tickets or whatever. Well, don't really, don't they do 1,500 tickets to the nationals? I think it's, it's, each year it kind of fluctuates. Mm. It, 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 I think it has to do with how many of the cars are made. So they, they want to make sure that every ticket goer has enough to cover their three, so to speak, if you get what I mean. Yeah. Like, so I think that has something to do with it. Um, that's just my observation. I have no other uh, information about that, but that's just what I've seen. Um, but hopefully and, and we that, will soon. Right. And I think, you know, you can just look. Most people have carded convention cars on them. You know, if you do, you can tell how long the runs are. Well, normally you know. I, normally the conventions are what, 5,000? Or, yeah, there's only 5,000 cars, right? Generally speaking, I would say that's a safe number. I mean, you well, would have okay. to look. Even if, even if, it's, if it's a 4,000 run... And you divide that by three, there should be at least 1,300 tickets sold. Right. Uh, and, and that's a lot. But I don't right. know if, if they're doing that. But I, I want to say, I wish I had a convention car. I oh, don't. here, let me, help you. let me help you with that. Grab the Honda S2000 from the last show. Um, wait, what? Little different topic. I've heard rumors that Hot Wheels are going to stop production in 2023. Do you believe that to be true? 
I hope no. not. There's no, no way. I don't. I don't see that one. Okay, Nick says Charlotte was sixty two hundred. Charlotte was indeed sixty two hundred. Okay, so if we did divide sixty two hundred by three, that is two thousand sixty six point six 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 seven. Okay, so by that statement, there should be two thousand tickets to nationals. Well, you know, I'm but sure there's other there's fact- not. I'm sure there's other factors that play into that. I mean, hotel space is one of those. You know, every every hotel that they have to, you know, they have to guarantee that they'll fill these amount of rooms, which is part of the reason why, you know, when you call down to get a room instead of going through Mark and Jennifer it kind of throws off things a little bit, you know? So I'm sure that has uh, something else to do with it. So 6,200 seems to be the common thread there. Now, if you look at that number and you say, let's pull, I've got an older car, older convention cars. Let's see if I got any. What's up, Joseph? Car. My yes, view. it has been a minute. I've seen the seen the race car getting put away for the rest for the for the hibernation. Okay, so this is probably the oldest carded one that I have right now. And okay, this is so this is from from eighteen. This is the Nova, and that was a run of five thousand. So you know they've increased yeah the number of cars being produced. Which in turn, I think, allows more people to be potentially have tickets sold to. Yeah. So if there's five thousand, now you're talking about sixteen hundred car or sixteen hundred tickets. You know, if everybody gets their three. So yeah. I don't know. I just think that I mean, obviously, the hotels have a lot to do with it, being that they, you know, if, do they want to sell out? But you also you, also, you got to figure we'll call it sixteen hundred, and say if everybody double rooms, that's eight hundred rooms in a hotel. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of hotel rooms, and I think that has the I think that's the number one problem with it is that they have to because every hotel has to leave rooms available for the people that are just coming in off the street, right? You know, for the most part, but right. I don't know. I just think that. Instead of putting all these new tricks and, and things that we all these new hoops that we have to jump through for national tickets, why can't we just streamline it? <laughs> Make it a little easier. Well, you know, here's another thing. Um what if it was completely open to the public? What if there was no oh no no well, newsletter? What, uh, Correct. What what if that opportunity for newsletter folks went away and now it's just like any other RLC sale or any other ticket, you know, online ticket thing for any other event that's out there, whether it's a comic con, a rock concert, comedy show, you know, tickets are released at this day. You fight the queue just like anybody else. I mean, that exclusivity of it, you know, I think that's maybe that's part of the reason why the newsletter is doing so well right now. Yeah. Because people have this perception that they have an in by doing it, you know, being part of the newsletter, other than just getting a free car and some really great info. I mean, again, just my thoughts. And you're not wrong. I mean, you know, when you, when you think about it like that, you know, sure, we could take away the the newsletter aspect of it. And, you know, then you're then it becomes an RLC sale. You know, when you have a little bit of the RL, when you have a little bit of the um, the newsletter, see, the, and here's the problem with that, though, when they say they're only going to do 800 tickets, say... 1,500 people submit for these tickets. How long is it going to take 
for them to go through that one to 800 before they open it up to the public. And you're going, well, I'm still waiting to hear. Are they going to tell us that, okay, you're in or so, are, they, are they not? You know, that's another thing that we have to look at too, because you don't want to have to send your check in and be like, all right, I'm in man. And but then you never hear anything. And then before you know it, they open it up to the public and you're like, I don't need to get mine. I already got it. You know? So and that's then you, a great, then you don't get it. That's a great question as well. I don't foresee, again, if this was me and I was in the CEU spot, and by no means am I saying I am, no. I'm just saying this is my take and my opinion on it, I would, you know, whatever the process is that they use to identify them, once they hit that 800, then they're going to set those off to the side and then everybody else, they're going to get an email and saying, hey, uh, you were not selected. What do you want to do um, as far as what your check goes? Do you want us to rip it up or do you want us to send it back to you? You know, And then you are still eligible to be a part of the online sale on X date. I don't think they're going to get back. To, they're going to do everything they can to get back to people before. Before they announced the sale date of the online sale, just to avoid that very specific uh, situation that you bring up. And on the flip side, to prevent people from double dipping, say. This is true. So very that's kind of how um, I'm looking at it. Um, I feel like they're not really... They may not have finished everything up for LA yet, so they may not even have started on, you know, things like extras, ticket sales, you know, vending machine pulls mm -hmm. until everything is done, especially off of that answer of, hey, we're looking towards mid-December. So I think they're they're still trying to get things finished up with LA and give themselves a little bit of time. You know, that again, that's just my take on it. Yeah. No, you're not wrong. I could be wrong. I mean, who knows? Maybe they're just, you know, maybe they're like, all right, we're gonna we're gonna wait two months and we're gonna, you know, let everybody kind of recuperate before we have to start this freight train rolling again, you know, which is fine. Right. I mean, I get off work. I don't first thing I don't want to do is go back to work, you know. So I, I understand where they're coming from on that one. So and it does make sense. I just I just hope, fingers crossed, that we will uh Yes. are being done on site. Yeah, nice. we had that in Charlotte too. And I think that's the way that those are going to go in the future. I just yeah. used it because in a historical sense. So I didn't mean to confuse anybody when I when I use the vending machine polls, but Miss Deb is correct. They were done on site like hey, they were in Charlotte. That yes. Right that time. Yes. But yeah, I just mainly for me, I just I just hope that we get to keep going. <laughs> okay, so Ooh. another question from James. Um, can I get a take on collectors working at Walmart here just to get the special cars? Um, as far as I'm I sure know, it, happens. <clears throat> it does. We, we all know it does. But there's also, as far as I know, I think that's against company policy. That you're not allowed to shop on the clock. It is. So I know it is. You know, well, there you go. We know it is. You know, if you see it, but that's just it though. Is 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 an employee taking those cars and putting them off to the side and then clocking out and then taking those cars and going, probably. We don't know. You know, without having access to a Walmart back room and cameras and surveillance, it's just, it's a sad, it's a sad time we live in, you know, when people get a second job to get cheap Hot Wheels and, and be able to be the first ones to the peg, so to speak, even if it's in the back room, it happens. It's been happening for years. You know, I, there used to be, there used to be an employee that <clears throat> would bring out cars when certain people were there it's been happening for years it's never going to stop it's just something we just have to live to deal with you know we have to we have to deal with 
you know, it's, it's, it sucks, but there's sadly probably not a lot of way of getting away from it. So here's my take on this. Um, Walmart has the all seeing eye, both in the front of the store and in the back of the store. Walmart is about making money. Um, they're not about employee A taking Hot Wheels and putting them in a side. They want that product out on the floor so it can sell because the Waltons like money. They like it a lot. That's my two cents on it. I think there's more of it gets put aside and that person B is at the back door and it's going out the back door and employee A is taking a little bit of money and putting it in their pocket. I think that's really more of what's going on than them sitting aside. Now, I know when my mom worked at Walmart, she flat out told me, don't tell me when Hot Wheels are coming out because I won't go and buy them. If you want them, you have to go buy them yourself. And I didn't, it makes sense. Why should she risk her job for then a 94 cent car because of me. No, that's not how that works. So again, I think my, like I said, my two cents is, is that it's more going out the back door than it is being set aside. Yes, there are genuine collectors that work at Walmart's targets or O'Reilly parts stores, because we do know somebody that worked in O'Reilly's parts store for a very long time. Dollar but Generals. They're not going to risk their jobs. They're not going to risk their jobs for it. I mean, the, the true quote-unquote collector is not going to do that. No. They'll wait, and they'll, you know, when it's when they're off the clock, when they're on their break, they'll go over there, go grab what they want, pay for it, and go put it away. That Again, that's just my two cents. Good question. Um, I'm told they have to again, stock and give 20, 24 hours for a public flag and get a shot around the last bite. So, you know, that, that seems a little I, hard because after you clock out, you're, you're now whatever. You're, you're officially a customer, so then you can buy whatever you want. Uh, again, my take on that is, is that might be a local store policy. I don't see how that is a... Um, a corporate policy because how is that different than saying clocking out and getting yourself a pop to go or a candy bar to go or getting doing some your grocery food, shopping. doing your grocery shopping. Cause my mom did that all the time. She would get off at two, you know, I'd go meet her. I'd drive the buggy and do her shopping. So um, is that a possibility? It quite, it might be. That might be a, a local store policy, or it might be a district policy. I don't think it's a corporate one, though. Um, but, you know, every area is different. I think your phone's ringing. It is. <laughs> but that's okay. Now, if now, that again, one rings and then this one rings, then I'm going to have to go. So. <laughs> I was going to say, it's probably your mom. Maybe. Or my brother. But Who knows? Well, see, the overnight guys, again, you have the all-seeing eye in the sky. You know, they're going to – they watch that stuff. If they suspect somebody's uh, doing something, they're not going to confront them. They're just going to keep watching them and watching them and watching them and watching them. And when they got enough evidence, they'll give them two choices. Either, you know, give us the stuff back and walk away quietly or we'll press charges. Mm -hmm. And it's usually the first one. So, again, well, that's just my opinion. Yep. All right. Well, we've got about five minutes left. Um, our next show is December 4th. We do have our kids toy drive going on. Uh, Justin Patrick brought up the idea of a gift exchange as well. We might do that. And I really like that idea. 
yeah, there was another idea that was brought up that us admins need to yip yap about um, some more. But really, that's all I got for tonight. I don't you have got, a car, so you don't have a car. No, uh, I have one because I brought it downstairs to rip, and it has. Ooh, I got my night. Hold on, wait. What was that? I got my 1995 treasure hunts working part time at KB back in the day. Helped the boss was a Barbie collector. Very nice. Yeah. See, and and I don't know if you can if you can see it, Joe, but over there's your Joffrey. And in that, well, no, I'm talking about that green Volkswagen right there. Oh Lord! You mean the, the painted one on the bottom? Yes, there is a 95 Volkswagen back there. I got it at a Walmart in North Platte, Nebraska when I was younger. Uh, <laughs> no, I would have been 14 years old when I bought it. And that was that was mine. But he is, what are you ripping there? My 54. I didn't, I, I didn't see what it was. Boop. That's one car. Nice. Had the manager stop me knowing I'm a collector and asked why I haven't been buying Hot Wheels anymore. And I told him about the night guy is why and what I've said tonight. Ah, there you go. See, and that might cause an issue to the might the night guy might stop buying cars. Night guy might not have a job anymore. Well, I'm throwing my errors. I'm, I'm having difficulties tonight. Okay, so I'm going to open my bone shaker. Even though it's not a skateboard. But we're still gonna here. Well here's what we'll do. We'll just open just the just the just the good part. Because the as a hot wheel collector, I, I don't care about any of that. I care about that. Very cool. Awesome. Well, I think that concludes things for tonight. Um, for all you folks that are out there. If you wouldn't mind giving us a like and a subscribe on the YouTube page, Ooh. or if you're out in uh, Instagram land, give us a, a little bit of like out there. We are on Instagram, although it's not as much. But, you know, we, we'll always be here, though, too. That's all I got for tonight. Brent, you got anything? It's grippy. Like, it's, like, legit. Like, it's got grip tape on it. Sorry, that's all I got. There's grip tape on the skateboards. It's kind of cool. All righty, folks. Well, we thank you all for taking the, the time out of your night to come hang with us for a little bit. Um, if you got anything else going on, go hang out in some of the other auctions. Say hi to folks. Nothing but peace and love. We're out. Bye. All right.